Hello everybody, it's Andy here from AM Media Games. In this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a counter so it'll count how many objects are in the box. And this can be used in many useful ways for puzzle games, for horror games. Um, it will give you the ability to run an event of how many objects are placed in a specific spot inside of a basket, inside of a box, um, maybe on a pedestal to open a secret door. Um, so without further ado, let me show you what I mean. So you can see here in front of me, I have this very uh, amazingly modeled box and we have four uh, spheres that we're gonna place inside of the box. So I have some physics handle code set up and a line trace system, a blueprint interface, which will enable me to pick up these uh, physics based objects and move them around. If you pay close attention to the top left corner of the screen, you'll notice that a counter will appear. So that lets me know that I've placed one of four objects inside the box. If we then place the second one in, that number will then change to two. So we're adding one each time. If we place the third one in, that number will change to three. If we take one of these out, that number will change back to two because there's now only two objects inside the box. So let's place the third one in. And if we take the fourth and the final one and we throw that in, we can then run some code at the end where you hear that key unlock the door. So it's useful in many, many ways. You could implement this in any type of game, um, whether it be you know, a horror game or even just a, a puzzle based uh, level by level game. So without further ado, let me jump in and I'll show you how I created this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go start new level and we will do this now. Don't save. So now that we've seen how the code works, um, and we're gonna make this from scratch. The first we're gonna do is we're gonna add a trigger into our scene. We're gonna go to all classes, um, and we're gonna type in trigger. You may already have this in your recently placed, which is fine. So we're gonna type in trigger, and I'm gonna drag drag in a trigger box. Once we have the trigger box in the scene, we can then, let's just create a basket to stop the spheres from rolling away. Uh, rolling away. <coughs> you don't have to do this part, that's perfectly fine. If you have something already set up that you want to use, that's perfectly fine. So I'm gonna create a small basket for the spheres to go inside of, just like so. And then I'm gonna make another Let's rotate this one like this, like this. Let's rotate this now on this axis. Let's place this here and place this one here. So we have a small container that we can place our spheres in. And we're gonna use a physics object. So all of this is, is I've created a, let's pop that there. So I created um, a blueprint and then a, the actor class. And then I went inside of here, I added a sphere static mesh using this feature, static mesh, and I used sphere. On the sphere, the only thing I've changed is simulate physics and mass of 100 kilos. I do have separate videos, so I'm not gonna go over it in these videos. Um, so my other videos will be a blueprint interface, how to set one up. Mine's called use open close, that's not what yours will be named unless you name yours the same. So if you ever see any of my videos where I say um, event use open close, the event use open close is a specific event that I created, which I named my blueprint interface. So it won't be the same for you unless you name it the same. So for this tutorial, some of the code, you'll have to watch the other videos to set up. I'm not gonna go over it again in this video. This one's all about how to add the counter. So we're gonna delete the begin play, um, begin overlap and event tick. We don't need any code in here. And we've got our sphere, we're gonna compile this and then we're gonna close out of it. We're gonna add the sphere object into the scene and we're gonna shrink the sphere down to make it smaller, like so. We're gonna add multiple of these. So let's do maybe five, just like so. <coughs> Now that we have these five spheres, 
we can test that the physics are working. Let's play from here. And we can see that we can pick these up and throw them around, which is perfect. So we have these five spheres, we have our container. Now we're gonna to go to level blueprint. So in our level blueprint, we're gonna get rid of these two nodes. We don't need event tick or begin play. We're gonna add, we can add a dispatcher if we wanna add an extra layer of uh, control to events on top of unlocking or achieving the target amount of spheres inside the container. We could add an event dispatcher, which will listen out. Once we know that there's five spheres, we can then call a custom event to unlock a series of doors, a hidden path, anything that you want to do. So we're going to create a variable and this one's going to be our count amount. So count amount. And this is going to be an integer because it's going to be a numerical value. And we're going to drag that in. So we're going to hold alt and drag to get set and then control and drag to get a set. We're going to create two custom events. So add custom event. We're going to copy control C and control B because we want two of these. This one's going to be our add value. And this one is going to be our remove value. So we're going to remove one or, or add one. Then we're going to get add out of this one. Uh, operators add, and I'm going to add one. So whenever we place one sphere, we're going to add one sphere. So we're going to add one. We're going to copy uh, these two. And we're going to place that in there. Place this one. Oops. Place this one in here. And we're going to place that in there. That in a minus or subtract and we're going to minus one place that in there so we have <coughs> on overlap we're going to add one value on end overlap or removing the object we're going to remove one value so we're going to add a print string so let's do print string so we can see what's what's happening and we want this to be the value in our print string. So we're going to uh, take our uh, output here and going to place that into our print string. So this is going to convert our integer, our numerical value into a visual indicator for the player to see on the screen to uh, debug the code. So now that we have that done, we want to set up a branch. So B on the keyboard and left, uh, left click. So hold B and then left click and it'll give you a branch. So we're going to place that in there out of um, our count amount we also want to get an equal and this is going to be five because we have five spheres so we want it to be equal to five when we have all five in this is going to go in our branch as our condition and out of this you can do anything you want so let's say uh, we could do a print string or we'll do a sound. So let's do play sound at location. <clears throat> and we'll do unlock door. So we have a door unlock sound effects. Now, out of the true, we could have... <coughs> excuse me. Out of the true, we could have this as the um, call event. So we could play a custom event here, um, or we can play a sound, or we could do the event dispatcher. So the event dispatcher could then call a series of events that you could create. So we have this set up now. So how this will work is when we place one of the spheres inside the box, it's gonna calculate and add one each time this is going to print string and show us on a screen in the top left corner. And then once we real, uh, we, we reach the five count or the fact, the maximum amount of five, and we know that it's five. So it's equal to, then this condition will be true. So it can play the sound. If we remove any of those spheres, then it will remove one of the values. So if we're on five and we take one out, we'll be on four. If we're on four and we take one out, we'll be on three. So 
let's set up the code for that. So let's add, we've got our trigger box. So let's add that into our level blueprint. So we're gonna go to add collision, begin, add collision, end. So this is our trigger box code that we're gonna set up. And we want to cast to our physics object. So it's called physics object pickup. So let's go um, cast to physics. And then we can see here that we have object pickup. Now we can, we could do it another way. We could use um, event dispatcher to remove using um, hard casts or hard references to objects. They're not always good to use in, but for this tutorial, it's perfectly fine. And um, we're gonna paste that. And we're gonna select that as a object. So you should have begin overlap, cast to the physics object, end overlap, cast to the physics object. Out of this one, we're going to do add. Out of the end, we're gonna do remove. These are our two custom events, this one and this one. So now we're gonna add a print string. So we're gonna copy that one, paste that here, and then pr plug that in to convert our integer to a text string. <clears throat> so we have that set up and we have this top one set up. It's nice and simple. We're gonna compile it and go into the game. We're gonna play. We're gonna pick up one of our spheres, drop it in, and we have one. So it doesn't matter the order. So you could have these scattered around a maze while you're being chased and you have to run them back to a box or feed maybe an, an angry demon. And then once we have all five, you can see there, you've got, you could have something taking them out and running away with them. So you have three, now we have four again. <clears throat> once we have all five, it'll play our door code. So I hope that helps. Um, any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, like it. If you dislike it for any reason, I'm not sure why, but if you dislike it, then hit the dislike button. Either way, you know, it, at least you've watched the video. Uh, help others by sharing it. And if you want to help me for free as well, subscribe to the channel. It supports me to support you with more videos like this to help you learn Unreal Engine. So I hope you found it useful. Um, if you need any help at all, you can join me over on Discord. Uh, where there's other people that are also learning game development and there's a lot of a lot of brains in that discord channel there's a lot of people with amazing skills and talents so thanks very much for watching take care and i'll see you in the next one bye bye for now